the Battle of Lake Trasimene was one of Hannibal's great victories against the Romans. Consul Gaius Flaminius faced, lost, and killed. An entire consular army was defeated and suffered more casualties after the battle. What was the background? What occurred in Hannibal's march? How did the battle transpire? What was the aftermath? Find out today on Roman History. In the winter of 217 BC, Hannibal's army was in Cisalpine Gaul, gaining Gallic allies but lost men, horses, pack animals, and elephants, except for one. Livy mentioned Hannibal trying to cross the Apennine mountain range at the onset of spring 217 BC but failed due to a snowstorm. However, it might not be accurate. On the other hand, he was worried about the Gauls attacking him and his army for plunder. The Roman prisoners had poor treatment, and the Roman allies received better treatment. In the spring of 217 BC, Hannibal's army of at least 50,000 marched from Cisalpine Gaul to the Etrurian plain. Meanwhile, the Romans organized two legions in Sicily, two in Sardinia, and two in Rome. On March 15, 217 BC, the Senate chose two new consuls and gained four, Gaius Flaminius and Nia Servilius Geminus. Flaminius was a novice homo, the first male of his family to serve in politics. In 232 BC, as the tribune of the plebs, he introduced the Lex Flaminia, which gave land to the landless in Ager Gallicus, close to Cisalpine Gaul. He served as the Sicilian praetor in 227 BC, which made him the governor. He was popular, and his son became aedile or magistrate. In 223 BC, he was consul and fought the Gauls. Which was successful. In 222 BC, he was the magister equitum, or master of the horse, under dictator Marcus Minucius Rufus. In 220 BC, he allowed the construction of the Via Flaminia, Flaminian Way, and Circus Flaminius. Three years later, he became consul again. He planned to use two consular armies, one under him and one with Geminus, to join and destroy Hannibal in one decisive battle like Telamon in 225 BC. Both armies had mainly heavy infantry as shock troops and hand-to-hand -hand combat with Velites to skirmish, and increased cavalry due to the Carthaginians' cavalry strength. Flaminius had legions 1 and 3, and Geminus received legions 2 and 4. In addition, they gained reinforcements from the Battle of the Trebia. However, he did not consider Hannibal's cunning. Also, his portrayal was negative, arrogant, overconfident, and impetuous, which was the same for Tiberius Sempronius Longus from the Battle of the Trebia. In addition, Flaminius disdained religious services before a campaign. Hannibal Barca had Hellenistic influences from learning about Alexander the Great and Pyrrhus of Epirus. He used most of what he had into an effective military force. However, Hannibal could not take many casualties in pitched battles. Nevertheless, he relied on his generalship, and one example was choosing battle sites to gain the most tactical advantage, ambushes and flanks. In addition, his tactics served to surprise his enemy. Flaminius camped at Aricium, and Geminus was at Arminium. Meanwhile, Hannibal decided to take the shorter route to Etruria to an area of marshes, which gave the element of surprise and avoided facing two consular armies from using the direct roads. Possibly, he took the path from Bologna to the Apennine and entered Pistoia. Polybius and Livy referred to Hannibal using wigs to disguise him from the Celts who might try to kill him. He still did not trust them since they attempted to stop him in his crossing of the Alps in 218 BC. However, it might be false, specifically to the trust issue. He put veteran soldiers in the front, the baggage behind them, the Gauls in the center, and cavalry under his brother Mago with the Numidians. Hannibal's justification was discouraging any potential Gaul, Celt, from betraying. It lasted four days with little rest, and the Gauls suffered the most. Pack animals, the last elephant died, and Hannibal had ophthalmia, losing his sight in one eye. After the grueling march in the Apennine mountain range, they camped in Etruria. It was a fertile plain that grew cypress, grapes, and olives. 
Hannibal's army used scorched earth tactics on the farmland and gained produce and pack animals. Flaminius saw the damage from Aretium and wanted to attack him, but his advisors cautioned him due to the Carthaginians' cavalry superiority. His reasons were to gain a quick victory and political purpose to enhance prestige. He did not want to be hurt politically for avoiding the enemy. Hannibal used his scouts to gain intelligence on geography, farmlands, and the Roman army. He found out about Flaminius' rashness. Hannibal used it to his advantage, continuing to destroy farms and deciding his place of battle the northern shores of Lake Trasimene. It is also possible that he wanted to meet with the 70-ship Carthaginian navy in the Tyrrhenian Sea to coordinate a possible attack on Rome. Hannibal's camp was on the northeast side of the shore of Lake Trasimene. On June 20, 217 BC, Flaminius' army arrived and camped on the northwest. That night, Hannibal ordered his men to go around to conceal in the hills, which was a forest. They hid in the trees for an ambush. The Iberian and Libyan infantry were in the camp. From right to left, his army had the Iberian and Numidian cavalry, Gallic troops, Gallic cavalry, Libyan and Iberian infantry with Hannibal, light troops, possibly Numidians, and Balearic slingers. Hannibal's camp was on the northeast side of on a foggy morning of June 21, 217 BC, Flaminius marched toward the Carthaginian camp. He did not scout to gain intelligence, a mistake. From back to front, the Ala Sinistra, left wing, with the baggage train, Legio III with theirs, Legio I with Flaminius and their baggage, Ala Dextra, right wing, and the Extraordinarii, elite Roman allied troops as the Aeli. The cavalry and Velites formed the wings. When the Roman vanguard engaged with Hannibal's veteran troops guarding the camp, his army ambushed them. The Romans were surprised and unprepared. Flaminius had no clue how to deal with the situation. During the three-hour engagement, the fighting was intense, and Hannibal's plan worked. The Gauls hated Flaminius, they tracked and killed him. Later, Hannibal could not find his body to give him a proper burial. Polybius shared a more emotional anecdote of his situation, but Livy presented a more accurate account, Flaminius trying to rally his men and the Gauls seeing him. Possibly, the Triarii, oldest and veteran Roman soldiers, were with him and fought them. The Romans drowned and annihilated. In the end, there were 15,000 Romans dead, and 1,500 to 2,500 Carthaginians killed, mostly Gauls. They, like the Roman heavy infantry, served as shock troops. After the battle, Hannibal allowed the Libyans to get Roman armor and weapons. Also, he sent his Numidian cavalry commander, Maharbal, to capture the remaining 6,000 Roman soldiers from the vanguard who escaped. Maharbal succeeded, and they surrendered. In addition, he dealt with 4,000 cavalry from Geminus under Gaius Centinus, 2,000 died and 2,000 captured. When the Roman government heard about the defeats, they felt worried because Hannibal's army was four or five days away from Rome. Also, they lost over 50,000 men from Tachinus, Trebia, and Trasimene. As a result, they decided to install a dictator, Quintus Fabius Maximus Verrocusos. Thanks for watching and please like, comment, subscribe, and enable notifications to see more of my videos.